She's an award-winning YouTuber and best-selling author obsessed with helping you go after the life you want. I like it. Join her as she seeks out the stories and strategies. Give me every little detail. Of extraordinary people who found success. I'm going to get emotional. Oh, my God. Welcome to Detail Therapy with Amy Landino. Good morning, good life. Welcome back to Detail Therapy. This is a special episode. If you've been around for a while, you know that every 10 episodes or so, I sit down with my best friend, Sarah McCain, and we just talk about whatever is on our mind, and that's what we're going to do today. So I'm not going to waste a lot of time, and we're just going to get straight into it. No messing around. But I do want to give you a heads up. There is not an explicit sign on this podcast, because technically, it is not. But I actually end up broaching the topic of this whole censorship issue with you. It comes up a lot with Sarah and um, we, you know, a few things slipped here and there. So we're going to censor it so that there's no issues. But if your babies are smart, they might not want to listen to this episode because they might notice a lot of removals of words. <laughs> so just keep that in mind. I don't know what's going on. I don't know who's in that room with you. Uh, if you're like me, I just have my earbuds in. I don't want anybody to hear what I'm listening to, but that's just because I like to focus on the things I'm doing. But I just wanted to give you that heads up. And also because I really do want your opinion on this. It's still something I haven't quite figured out yet. So um, I'm not going to do an intro. Or, I'm sorry. I'm not going to do an outro for this episode. We're just going to kind of end it because it went really long. So I don't want to keep you much longer than the actual conversation with Sarah. But when you get a moment after you kind of listen where I'm coming from on this whole censorship of the podcast issue, if you could pop over to the Detail Therapy podcast and let me know on my latest photo what you think about this and whether or not it's a big deal to you. I would love to hear it. It's not something I've ever really addressed. And, um, you know, it's just not territory I'm super familiar with. So, Pop over to at details podcast on Instagram. Leave a comment with your thoughts because I really, really need them and I appreciate it. So with that, I'm just going to jump into it again. No dilly dally, no mess around. Here is your latest edition of BFF chat. Sarah McCain. What up? <sighs> is this on? Are this, is this thing on? Are we starting? It's, on. it's totally on. Okay. Sorry. I was just reading what people think about you. I know. In a and world where fine. I take over the podcast. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much every time. So. You're welcome. <laughs> uh, is, this, is this good? Will mm-hmm. this do? Okay. It sounds wonderful. Listen, you know what's fun? What? <laughs> Looking at what other people think about your best friend. I know. I don't. What do you mean? What does it say about you? No, I, I'm speaking from my perspective. So I'm okay. reading what people think of you. Oh, I see what you're saying. To define so- for you for a moment. You are my best friend. Okay. So when I'm reading things about you, I well, am reading you know, things I, about I did need my, my weekly friend. reminder. Okay. That, uh, now are we all on the same page thing. now? Yes. Are we all on the same page? Yes. <laughs> Got it. Um, first of all, I just have to say, I would never ask people this question that you asked. Okay. So here's what's happening. Sarah is listening. Sorry, listening. I'm listening to myself talk because I'm trying to figure out if the audio levels are fine. Sarah is looking at my phone because I just recorded a video today about the assumptions that my followers on Instagram have about me. And so I addressed some of them in a video. And she was saying, what are we going to talk about on the podcast? And I was like, well, there's some really interesting stuff in these assumptions. So if you wanted to go deeper into that, we could. You know what they say about assumptions? What? Make out it's out of you and me. I don't know if we can say that on here. But That's okay. Assume. You know what's funny? What, I can assume we, ta- can we, we can't. we talk about that? I don't know what to do about this censorship issue. Is this related to you or the world? Because the world is not (laughs) censoring itself. (laughs) I would love if the world was a little bit more censored. Uh, I think. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry. I clearly don't think we need to censor ourselves. Coming in hot. Coming in hot. Uh, (laughs) I don't know what to do about it because I don't feel comfortable censoring people. But at the same time, I want to be respectful of my audience. And I think you handled it really well with the Alyssa Master Monaco episode. I know, but I think I have to do that every time. Which I'm going to be really honest with the listeners right now. Stop listening to this episode and go listen to the Alyssa one because I loved it. Absolutely fair. Like, I think my mom would agree. I think pretty much everyone would agree. And your mom loves listening to me. Yeah. (laughs) So. Also fair. I'm just saying hit pause come back to this after go listen to Alyssa shut this off (laughs) see just I thought on that one you censored at the top you told people 
and people can choose what they put in their ears. Yes, that's true. But I do think that there's something to be said about feeling good about a piece of content that you can have on around you because it's mostly positive and it's mostly um, helpful and not being ashamed to have it on out loud like when you're home with your family or you're maybe at work. I don't know who listens to stuff out loud at work, but that's just not my preference. I mean, I'm going to be honest. I've had one glass of wine, so I'm just in the mood to play devil's advocate with you right now because I actually <laughs> fundamentally agree with everything you're saying. Okay. I think your podcast should be able to Thanks be Thanks for leading with that. Yeah. I'm just, I'm in a devil's <laughs> advocate mood. Um, also because of these assumptions, some of them are making me a little upset. So are I think I'm really? getting, well, I think, some, I mean, I get you asked the question and people are being a little bold. Yeah, but, but that's the whole point is, is making an assumption, not, you know, what do you think of me? No, a hundred percent. But. First, to finish the censorship Please. prompt. Um, I agree with you. I actually think most of the time people curse for no reason. It does not need to be said. You can say it just as well, probably without. Sure. However, I would say there are times where it can be a positive experience to just scream <laughs> at the top of your lungs. <laughs> and then you might feel better because sometimes it just puts it in perspective. You get it off your chest. You're through it. Yeah, I agree. I'm, But I again, for the sake of like a podcast and you interviewing people yeah. – and if somebody left right and center is just dropping a curse word every other word, mm -hmm. you might want to hit pause in the recording and be like, is yeah. it serving a purpose? Yeah. Shoot. I just realized somebody totally asked me the assumption that I cuss a lot in real life and I did not address it in the video. So now I'm bummed about that. Listen, quite frankly, I'm more upset at the number of people that hit on you. <laughs> that's not an assumption. Well, that's just you. That's listen. just that. That's Instagram. I know, but I don't. The I DMs don't. are supposed to be private. They feel safe. <laughs> safe space. Safe space. <laughs> and I, yeah. I I, appreciate their enthusiasm and I just move on. I'm not that stressed out about it. I mean, I'm not stressed out about it, but I was getting really into certain assumptions and then I just get like a random pickup line. I'm like, <laughs> I assume you're good at pickup lines. What's a good uh, pickup line? I assume that person hasn't gone on a date in a while. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm making assumptions about the assumptions. I like it. Um... Listen, uh, so yes, Amy asked people what they would assume about her. Mm -hmm. And you just said something interesting. You said they're supposed to be bold because they're assumptions. I mean, yeah, they, they, I think that it allows for boldness, yes. True. But it reminds me of a time I was at a leadership conference. Mm. And there were probably like 10 of us. And after the first day, the woman leading it had everybody – we, did, we all did it for everybody. And what she did was she was like, I'm going to have each of you stand up again. You're going to just say your name and uh, I think what your first job was. And everybody around the room silently wrote one word on a post-it of what their first impression of you was. And then we all got given those post-its at the end of the conference and we would read them out loud. So like I was like, oh, these are the post-its I got. So it was like real time of this. And um, people, you could, I mean, we didn't really necessarily rebut it, but like a lot of what I got was young because I look mm -hmm, really young mm -hmm. I was the Relatable. youngest person in this conference I like, mean look at me I, I mean, also get that a lot <laughs> I think I was I think I was 25 at the time okay and yeah the, you were looking like a fetus then right okay. I pretty much was in middle school <laughs> well and I was the youngest by far but the to be other... fair you were really working the eyeliner because you were trying to look older oh, at the it was time so aggressive <laughs> So aggressive. Like now I can't even wear eyeliner. I have PTSD. I can't. We can talk about it now no. because you've, you've come to so, your own I'm so conclusion. glad I have a new Instagram account. No one can find those photos. But it was in a lot of eyeliner. Oh, and let's be honest, it was under eyeliner. <laughs> <laughs> so let's, just, let's just say for all these people right now that it wasn't like a sexy shadow eye. Since you can't look it up on Instagram, let's it just was give you... <laughs> <laughs> okay, so if you ever hear us shrieking in the next hour, because it's probably going to happen, here's what happened. A story within a story. Uh, I'll make mine quick. I was at Sarah's birthday party last weekend, and I had a few too many bottles of uh, bottles of wine, probably glasses. <laughs> Amy had <laughs> eight <laughs> bottles of There were four of us. Probably. Amy had eight bottles of wine. Probably glasses. And... Um, <laughs> Don't tell my husband. He'll totally think it's bottles. So, then it was um, bottles. So, so I started imitating Heather McDonald's imitation of Lisa Vanderpump. It's so meta. It's so good. And I don't know. I've never practiced before ever. And at Sarah's birthday party, I pulled it out for the first time and I couldn't stop doing it. And let's set the context again. Like it was a small <laughs> gathering of just four of us. And so everyone would be like, in, you know, sidebar. And then all of a sudden you just hear Amy. <laughs> 
<laughs> no, 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 no. Hold on. But the thing is, when you do it, you have to finish a sentence with it. So I did oh, it for reasoning. Lisa Vanderpump. I don't just shriek for no reason. But I'll give you an Towards example. Towards the end of the night, it might have been for no reason. I'll give you an example. Ask me a question. Okay. Um, Story. Oh, okay. You're, my question for you, though, is one of the pickup lines. Did God spend a little more time on you? Yeah, he did. He did, actually. <laughs> he did. He told me that. He did. He told me. I, oh, my God. It's terrible. Okay, people turn us um, off now. Yeah, okay. Alyssa. Go to the Alyssa episode. <laughs> uh, anyway, um, so the leadership conference. Yes. So, yeah, I was 25. The next youngest woman was probably close to 40. So, yes, and all of their observations are correct. I was young. But it was, like, it was young. It was there, None of them were necessarily mean, but when you're trying to start your career and, and you're, you're like trying and you're 25 Ugh. and you know you're the youngest in the room and you're trying to hold your own weight, if you're like, oh wow, that's what that person's pers- first impression, a little first impression all of me things. was. All yeah. little, see, it gets me tongue tied. Yeah, it was, I didn't like it. So like, I didn't like it when it was face to face. What did you learn from that though? Because I feel like that would be <laughs> less eyeliner. S- like, <laughs> <laughs> and see. no, um, honestly, I think. <laughs> A lot of it's stuff I've had to continue. Like, I'm similar to you. I think we both just look young. People would not guess I'm over 30. Was that the biggest thing that pissed you off, though? It's the one I remember the most. I think one that also kind of pissed me off was blonde. Because I'm like, these are just like, I took time when I was writing about the other people. Mm, love languages. And and it's not even like I wanted a soliloquy. Like, I didn't want them to be like, <laughs> find this beautiful word. But like, I took time to be like, okay, so what I thought of that woman was I thought she was shy. But would I write down shy or would I write down introverted or would I write down intelligent or intellect? Like, I kind of just ran mm. through in my head before and I was like, literally, you wrote down blonde. Like, you could have. Like, so to be fair for that person. I don't know. We don't, I don't remember. Uh, if he totally missed the point about the fact that you were supposed to be learning something from those words. Yeah. And it, he, I assume it was, it was a he, she, it was a woman. Okay. It's a she. <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> we're good. We're good. He, we're good. Um, no, but if she was just saying like name recall. Yeah. And that was a way she was remembering names. But I assume that was not the assignment. And I also wasn't the only blonde in oh, the room. Yeah. But, but maybe your blonde was on fleek. Unlike my eyes. Um, <laughs> no, I think my real takeaway from that whole experience, though, was like, yeah, you can't control what your face looks like. You can't control what people's first impressions of you are necessarily going to be. But the factors you can control are, okay, maybe, especially in that job, I started dressing a little differently after the conference. Really? You know, I I think a lot of it is knowing the presence you bring into the room. So I think it was a lot of little, yeah. little tweaks. I didn't change who I was, but I might change how I would introduce myself or um, my default mode, I think more so then than even now was to go to humor right away. And I think that ages you as well. Mm-hmm. Um, you yeah. know, as much as I think we live in a very not always friendly feminist society and there's a lot of sexism, I think ageism is also incredibly rampant, at least in our community. I think I see that a lot more yeah. or in meetings where it's like, oh, my daughter's the same age as you. And I'm like, you are not going to take me seriously when I pitch you something. Right. I think that's also just like lack of originality and finding something of, uh, to talk about. Oh, I'm a person too. Right. <laughs> like I've met someone your age. Huh. They're my child. Oh, wow. You have eyes. What else can we figure yeah. out? Like, you know, yeah. what I, mean? I, I do think that that, which you have to remember, <sighs> like when I, I catch myself anytime I'm about to say to somebody, Oh, my dad loves that. You know what I mean? Like, oh, I do. Because then your ageism reverse, right? Like, Where I oh, challenge, you're much older than me. This I is challenge the thing my Kevin dad all the about. time. He'll come home from work and he'll be like, so this girl said in this meeting. And I say, oh, wait, was a 12-year-old in the meeting? He's <laughs> like, no. I was like, well, would you have said about your male coworker this boy said? He's like, well, no, but it's like a girl, like you and the girl. So I was like, it's one thing if you're talking about me and my best friends. Right. It's another thing if it's a 35-year-old woman in a meeting and you're calling her a girl. Right. And so I can't, I call, he doesn't, I think he's slowly stopping, but I, I just, I well, think now that, he's done. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, now he's done. Oh, doing it. you guys started bringing 11 year olds to council. <laughs> no, I think that that's super You're just like, gonna, ugh, it's, 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 a, it's good to learn that, you know, like you don't really think about the language that you use. But it sets a tone. Right. Especially if you're then in a meeting with said girl, woman, mm-hmm. and you bring up, like, you're like, oh, um, this girl said something important today in the meeting. And someone's like, who? And you're like, Cheryl. And then it just discredits her. It takes her, like, down to right. 
being less than. Right. It's subtle little language things like that. Right. Oh, I like that. It's also why I hate, I hate, and I work in corporate, I hate when anyone in that situation calls me honey Mm. or sweetie. Does that happen still? Uh Uh-huh. And sometimes it's older women. Like, it's not necessarily, this isn't like me being like, Mm -hmm. it's an inappropriate Mm -hmm. male. But even when it's older, I just feel like you're treating me like I am in the sixth grade. Right. Or it's it's like, that's what it feels like to us maybe, but it might also be more um, just... Let me let me be a little bit better than you in this situation. Like mm-hmm. I know better than you. Oh, not n- not nece- yeah, not necessarily like you're so young and stupid. Right. It's more just like I'm experienced in this, so take a hint. It's all a power honey. play. Yeah. I don't like it. Totally. I so get just it. be mindful of your words, which goes back to don't always need a curse. Yeah. I think anything, just slow Sarah. down, think <laughs> about what you're saying, and me from the beginning of this contact, <laughs> I can't speak. It's That's okay. You're very words. excited. I am. I'm so. very riled up, and it's only Tuesday. Take a drink. Okay. All right. It's fine. Okay. But, but yeah, don't curse if you don't have to. Just think about your words. I know. I think that that's something. It. it I'm so conflicted about that. Like, every day I'm conflicted about that because I've not in the history of a YouTube video, except for I think one, I used in a video. Which, but it's arguable whether that's a curse word. It, I'm just. Totally. And it was a motivational video and actually did well, I think, because I used the word. And yeah, I think get that's. Your- but 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 at the same time it's like I feel conflicted all the time because it's so a part of my vocabulary now that it grosses me out and I don't even realize I'm doing it and sometimes Vin will point it out Vin will be like Amy you literally just said like f four f-bombs in the space of a couple seconds and he does it too and he doesn't realize it we we you hear it from others and you don't hear it in yourself and that I think that's so frustrating to me but then Mm -hmm. when I'm creating content I'm so intentional about it I hear everything and I like slightly like twinge because I know that I have to, I have to deal with it somehow. Well, but that goes back to and I would challenge anyone to maybe have normal conversations as if you're creating content or if you're not yeah. in this industry. Maybe like for me, it's like when I go into a meeting, I'm much more intentional about what I'm going to say versus an off the cuff conversation. Mm -hmm. But why not be that intentional in every conversation? It might be very exhausting, but I think we've gotten to this point where we're only seeing the world through our eyes. We're only listening like to ourselves. Mm -hmm. Like we're not listening to each other. Mm -hmm. And so I think that's the bottom line is if I'm going to go talk to a friend about something, have I slowed down even just for a second? I'm not saying like, your whole car ride to hang out with a friend, you have to think about how they're going to receive the words you're going to say. But it goes back to, and we talked about this a lot while we were traveling, love languages. And right. it goes back to being aware of the words that you choose to say will have an impact on other people. And so ultimately, if somebody, and I would say there's probably a large population that will get turned off the minute they hear you curse. Yeah. So if you really want to get your point across mm-hmm. and you know people are going to stop listening, then redirect the energy. Find another way to say it. Yeah, totally. Um, I would love if more people slowed down. I agree. I say this as we talk quickly, but it's just I like talking fast. But I do think it's it. There's there's something to be said. Um, I think it mostly happens when we're having conversations and everyone's trying to one up each other. Not even one up in the sense that I'm better than you. One up in the sense that it's like I can I can keep up with you in this conversation and I'm, I can make jokes too. One and up then to be heard. Somebody, yeah, yeah. It's all just trying to be heard. And then somebody makes a joke and it's like, wait a minute. Was were you working on that for a while? Because it's either not related mm. or it was completely oh, uncalled that. for. You know what I mean? I hate they that. come out of nowhere and it's like, uh, I missed the memo on where that was open territory. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, but it, but I, it's not that I don't do that. No, we all do it, and I think a lot of a, like anything we say here most of the time, and I think we're pretty good at this, applies to us too. I'm not mm-hmm. saying like, oh, this is my big pet peeve. I am guilty of cursing. I mean, we have a rule um, when. Kevin and I fight because we're normal. We fight. <laughs> um, we don't curse while fighting with each other. Ooh. And I should, because in case he's listening to this, I should point out I break that rule a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I am working on it, honey. Um, but I think because he's pointed out before in a moment where we're not debating or disagreeing on something, the minute it escalates to that, we're not even making valid points anymore. Right. It's just like a little dig. It's an easy thing to resort to. And then it's just anger. And totally. I mean, I appreciate it's harder in the moment to remember. But the moment I do, I'm like, okay, he's right. 
He's a hundred percent right on that one. Yeah, totally. Not on calling people girls in meeting, but a hundred percent right on the other one. <laughs> well, so. we all have our wins. And my my loss here was playing devil's advocate because <laughs> totally failed at that. Yeah, how'd that go? Didn't go well. I Please don't, don't curse. Okay, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> don't do it. It's a terrible idea. All right. Well, okay. Let me do this because I really would like feedback on this. So while you're looking up assumptions, it, I or need something. your face. Again. Yeah, it's a it's a logging issue, right? Um, I would like to hear from anyone who listens to this show if, for some reason, naughty words are gonna totally ruin you know, the I experience. Them naughty words. They are kind of naughty I, though. I, like, be just, real. Yeah. Okay. Okay. But if you heard it. <laughs> Pretty naughty. I, I think it's just like I had an adverse reaction to you, that that word. Choice. Okay, you don't like the word naughty. I don't know okay. Why. All right, noted. Um, okay, but what about? Okay, sorry. What about um, if if your if your nephew said a bad word? Oh no, it would be naughty. I do think. No, I don't. Th- I just okay. okay you don't like that word. Got word. it. Okay, but it's I a think, bad word. But again, I think he's at the age. Or any kid is at the age where, if you know that word, you have so many other options. We're we're teaching you words. Right. We're teaching you about life. Like if you had, if you let a young kid curse a lot, yeah, it's gonna go. I get from super there. uncomfortable I bet you there about is some kind of percentage. Yeah, yeah. Even babies who can't understand. Babies what you're who can't saying. understand. I'm like, I need to be so better. Vulnerable. Yeah. yeah. So vulnerable. And then the parents that are like, it's fine, it's great. I'm like, ooh. You I curse three know. times in front of a baby, they become a serial killer. It's like <laughs> direct science. It's totally going to happen. Totally looked that up. Okay. So, but the thing I was saying at the start of this was I just think it's interesting when it's about, these are about you, obviously, assumptions people make about you. Right. And I just find it funny because I know you and I've known you for, what did we decide? Six years. And so, yeah, like, I'm trying to think back think. to my assumptions of mm-hmm. you when I first met you. Yeah, what were they? I'm going to need more time to marinate on that. Okay. Um, but... I just think not it was very memorable. <laughs> well, I know you were quiet. I don't think you wanted to be at the event we were at either. Um, probably not. We were at that birthday. Probably not. I think we were both. Oh like, no! Honestly, like it was one of those things where it's like you do things with your significant other because you care about them. Like I wanted to be there, and I support his friends, so I was super right. happy to be at a birthday party. But at the same time, you get there and you're like, hmm. "Who's this <laughs> young blonde that just keeps coming over?" Really eyeliner <laughs> right like I don't like this bar and it's I don't like, dark. like and it's like there's nowhere to sit like uh, what do I do with my hands yeah <laughs> I don't know what to do here I just I very much remember you were quiet yeah for sure but like I don't remember having strong feelings about that but I do think I was like oh, I wonder if I'll see her again right because it's like what's the balance like there's all these I don't know it, well, we, like, we digress yeah but yeah. none of my I could go into detail about the logistics of that part somebody here did say you are a shy person so that could have been an assumption I was making well, I have talked from the high heavens and beyond about how much I'm introverted. So I don't think that's a weird assumption for somebody to make that I'm shy. I don't necessarily think all I, introverts I think sh- are shy. I agree. I think I am introverted. I don't think I am shy anymore. Ooh, you can rap. I can rap. Can you spit some bars? Um, Yes, I can. But let me choose carefully because the song I'm really good at has a lot of bad words in it. A lot of naughty words. <laughs> Full circle to the cursing. With uh, Elisa Vanderpump with, accent. No, I can't. It's <laughs> Dr. Dre. I can't My do Lisa Vanderpump. Dr. Dre meets Lisa Vanderpump. I have to censor myself too. If it was up to me, UMFers would stop coming up to me with your hands out, looking up to me like you want something free. When my last CD was out, you wouldn't bump with me. But now that I got slow company, everybody want to come to me like it was some disease. But you won't get a crumb from me because I'm from the streets of Compton. I told them all, all little gangsters, who you think helped mow them all? Now you want to run around talking about guns like I ain't got none. What you think I sold them all because I stay well off? Now all of them say mail all day saying Dre fell off. What, because I've been in a lab with a pen and a pad trying to get this label off? I ain't having that. This is the millennium of aftermath. It ain't gonna be nothing after that. So give me one more platinum plaque and F rap. Hey. You can have it back. So where's all the mad rappers at? It's like a jungle in this habitat. When all you savage cats knew that I was trapped with gas you when went. you were cuddling a cabbage. <laughs> <laughs> it's my favorite. Yeah. That's my favorite verse ever. I'm not gonna lie. I was hoping you were gonna go West Philadelphia. Chilling out back and relaxing all cool and shooting some b ball outside of cool. When a couple of guys, they were up in the hood. Started making trouble in my neighborhood. I got one, one little fight, fight and my mom got scared. Your mama let your auntie and mom go to nowhere. 
<laughs> that oh, was a good one. Good. I'm proud Thank of you. you. Thank you. Okay. Oh shoot, um, that's so much more relatable than what I picked. I yours was just straight impressive, and I had to very much I bite my to, tongue. But here's I was going to try to beatbox. And the reason that. somebody put that assumption in there is because that's the rap that I did on my Instagram stories when I was at Austin Evans' wedding. So that's everybody was like, "That's not an looking. assumption if you saw her do it." No, I think it was good. Let's start at the beginning, children. An assumption <laughs> is. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Um, there are a few, like, there's themes for sure. Do you ever slack? Do you feel like you ever slack? Um, I talked about that today in the video. I, I think there are areas of my life that I slack on. Mm-hmm. Like, like I like to eat junk food sometimes, or... Um, I slack on how often I could go see my family. It, it, I think that there's a lot of things I slack on. And there's still things I slack on in my business too. Like I wish I was sitting down and doing accounting on a weekly basis, but I'm not doing it. And I should have somebody else doing it. And I don't. So there are things that I slack on. It's just a matter of what it is. It's, it's not like there's no perfection. Human. Yeah, it's yeah. not perfection. I think that, that that's the thing about assumptions. They're all going to be these huge concepts. I mean, quite frankly, if you were the avatar of what these assumptions would make you. I'm going to just go out on a limb and say you would never sleep and um, you'd probably have no friends. And I don't think you'd have any hobbies. Or okay. Okay. Fun. Let's go in on this. I'd have no friends. What, what well, about those the, characteristics? The control freak level of questions. Um, also, it seems like you are such a Do you think a I'm a control freak? I don't at all. Because I said I was a control freak. Uh-oh. <laughs> um, but, well, I, but, but I think that that's something that over time I've just – figured out how to balance well, like, I would like my your feelings. definition of control freak because to me yeah a it's control kind of arbitrary freak, i mean are you a perfectionist and very detail oriented when it comes to the products you're putting out yes 100 percent. control freak i mean i was your maid of honor i was at your wedding i we did that mm-hmm. we did that whole thing together mm-hmm. i know vin was there too um and to me if you were a control freak it would have played out a little differently like you were very go with the flow yeah that's you interesting. you are very go with the flow and i don't I... think that's in any of these assumptions and maybe that's just when we are no out. i'm not go. I, yeah that's actually really that's fair do you know what i want to point out about our our conversation with gretchen yeah um since we haven't really talked about that but we have talked about Alyssa. Alyssa, be my friend <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> Alyssa, call me She's back. She's not listening this far. Um, so uh, Gretchen was so kind and accommodating, mm-hmm. not just in opening up her home, but with letting me handle audio issues that we were having throughout the podcast. And when you listen to it, which uh, I don't think you have. Well, no, you will have by the time you hear this. You really can't even tell that anything was going wrong because she was just so just present with us as much as we were. So that was really cool. And I just think that that's a moment that I could have been super control freak. But I was more go with the flow because I just wanted to get it handled. No big deal. Keep going with the conversation and not make it a more uptight conversation. So I think I'm super aware. And I also want to state for the record in regards to the wedding, if we are being a hundred percent honest. Uh-oh. No, no, I, it's good. I I believe I was an upholder at the wedding, but I was leaning obliger most of the time. No, and I would say that was not a correctly placed no. Uh, agreed. <laughs> uh, but I also think, again, I just don't like the phrase control freak, especially in regards to you, because I would say you are such a planner. Yeah. To me, a control freak comes out when somebody maybe isn't a planner, when somebody isn't open to other ideas or somebody isn't um, good at collaborating. Because I think anytime I've interacted with you, and we've done slight work things, we've Mm -hmm. traveled together, Mm -hmm. we've been in each other's weddings. You've been mistaken as my assistant time and time again. Quite (laughs) frankly, I don't know if that's a compliment, (laughs) but... Best friend assistant. <laughs> um, I'll take it. Uh, but yeah, we've been in a lot of situations where I would have seen that side of you. And I feel like because you plan everything and you think through scenarios before they arise, which is the same mm-hmm. thing you would have done at your wedding, when you're in the moment, you don't come off as controlling. Yeah. You I th- come off as prepared. You come off as certain and confident. And some people might interpret that as a control freak. But I've also seen you when... Like, I can't think of a specific example, but say you have a plan and somebody throws you a curveball. I've seen you be able to pivot without being, to me, a control freak would be like, no, we're doing it this way. It's the only way to do it. You know what? And, but here's the thing. Like, my gut instinct is to be control freak-ish. I think that's why I say that. But my external presentation 
You hide your control freak. I do because I know I know that it's not like healthy. Yeah. So I'll give I'll actually give an example exactly of what you just said. When we were in Saudi Arabia, mm-hmm. uh, we went to dress rehearsal, and I sat down and somebody was practicing in front of me, and I was waiting my turn, and Vin. Vin, don't get mad that I'm calling you out. But, like, Vin did say, you know, I think you're missing more video in your presentation. And I felt very confident. I don't tend to have a lot of actual videos playing in my presentation about video because a lot of tech issues can go wrong. And I was also in a country where approvals were really hard to get. Um, If you had a low cut shirt on in a sample, they weren't going to approve it. So it was a lot of components, but he, you know, my question, you know, my, my control freak in me was, was wigging out because I was like, I prepared my presentation. I'm ready to go. This is good. And now all of a sudden I'm being entertained by the idea that it's not good enough. And I don't like that because I'm here and I want to do the best job possible. And I speak tomorrow. Can I fix it? And I turned around to my handler and I said, I need more time. And she said, okay. See, that's perfectionism to me. It And it was. It absolutely I mean, was. It's on, I think it's perfect. Heightened perfectionism could be skewed control freak. Mm-hmm. But also the way that I handled it, I, I could have kind of wigged out more publicly about the control issue. But I just decided to, I'm picking perfection over control freak. Mm-hmm. I'm going to leave. I'm just going to let everybody figure it out. And I left and I was gone for an hour and I forgot to not have my phone on do not disturb. And people were kind of freaking out trying to figure out where I was. But when I was ready, I was ready and I came back and a couple of things got disapproved. But ultimately the presentation did end up better at the end of it. So I do think you need to be open to other ideas. My control freak shows in those moments when I'm not entertaining those right. ideas And then I get mad at myself that I didn't entertain those ideas initially. And then I'll just go change it. But most of the time, I'm just going to say, hey, everything's fine. I was ready. Now I'm ready to ready again with I made some adjustments. If you if we have any further issues, let me know. But I want everybody else to feel just as calm that I'm not freaking out. My presentation is going to suck. I knew it was good. But I just wanted everybody to feel good about the fact that I made changes for a reason. At that point, it's a perception thing in front of an an organizer that's paying you to speak and well, that you may not be prepared. I think that's the important thing to point out too. You yeah. Can, it's, I don't mean to make a pun on Gretchen's book of again, course. but it's the outer order inner calm. Yeah. Like you, things might be not outer order, outer disorder might be happening, but mm-hmm. if you can keep the inner calm. And that's why I feel like I'm it'll, doing it'll a lot resonate of time. Out. So I guess I just, I don't disagree with your assessment that you are a control freak, but you don't project it. And I don't know. I think this assumption, I was just arguing with it. Okay. I think no, I like it. I like that you argued with it, I'm but I challenge and it. that, but that's why I think there is that assumption there. And listen, I'm going to go a little lighthearted for a second. Okay, you live in Ohio. Fun fact. I do. Um, so, and I don't know why they ask this question. So maybe I'm forgetting something we learned in history class as kids. Um, did you want to be an astronaut as a kid? No, that must be because John Glenn. But oh yeah, I gave a shout out to. Well, I didn't actually. Alyssa gave a shout out to. I know she did. That was the event. Yeah. Alyssa yeah. totally remembers me from. Of course. Um, you never wanted to be an astronaut as a kid. No. That was a strong assumption. From Everybody this says that. I think that's actually a funny assumption. Wait. Pause. Rewind. Everybody tells okay, you but they like, assume you want no, to no, be no, an no, astronaut no. as a kid. That's not what I meant. <gasps> Blast off. Uh, <laughs> uh, no. What? Like they. Okay, I, everybody says what? <laughs> um, everybody says, give me that because I got to turn the air conditioning on. I'm freaking hot. Um, everybody says, Such like, what do, what do you want to be when you grow up? What do you want to be when you grow up? And it's like, do you want to be an astronaut? Like, it just ends up being the stereotypical answer. Oh, you're saying, like, answer. everybody says that to a so child. So it would, it would actually it. be kind of funny if he said that because, like, that's a thing that people say. Say about it. Please let us know what I'm other okay um, careers you say about people from Ohio. <laughs> what did you want to be when you grew up? Uh, Are you still trying to figure that out? Probably. I I don't know if I left you in your right spot. Um, I I think, I think probably like a music star. Ooh, yeah. We just heard you rapping. Yeah. I liked, I liked music a lot growing up. I I still do. I was going to be an architect. Really? Then I realized a lot of math was involved. Mm, There's that. But the Sims still play it from time to time. Build houses. Don't even care about the people. (laughs) All right. 
So I'm going to agree with every assumption on here that says you're awesome. That's a fair assumption, and it does play out in real That's life. That's super nice. Anytime, because I'm also then going to agree with that you make super awesome friends. <laughs> so, <laughs> yes, also, also true. But the real one I really want to say is like so spot on. Okay. Is that you were raised by a strong woman. I talked about that in the I video. Mean, I did. I did. Jackie. Yeah. Shout out to Jackie. Yeah. You know what's so funny? I never got on the bandwagon of calling my mom by her first name. I kind of want to get into that. Well, your mom's, I feel in my, like, your mom's in my phone is Mama Jackie. Okay. And I, also, she won't approve, by the <laughs> she way. She won't like that. <laughs> yeah. Mama. Um, my mom was... She won't approve of Jackie? Or? She won't approve of me calling her Jackie, I don't think. Yeah, I'm going to call her Mama Schmidt. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm just going to do it. You should call her Mama Schmittastic. Okay. Because okay. we have to keep that going. Okay. I'll make it happen. Okay. Um, yeah, my mom's very strong. I talked about it in the video. Very, very strong. She was in the military, and I think I got a lot of that yep. ingrained I mean, in me. I'm around your mom for five minutes sometimes, and I feel like I've been <laughs> more put together. <laughs> I feel like I figured my s out. My oh, <laughs> really? <laughs> now we're doing that. I'm gonna censor myself. Okay. No, I genuinely, she is the kind of person that makes you like just being around her. You like rise to the occasion. Mm-hmm. Anyway. It's um, assumptions cool. that you should make about Mama Schmittastic okay. is that she's Wait. amazing. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Absolutely. Uh, no doubt. I thought you were literally reading assumptions about my mom. No, I was like, not go We're not doing that. I didn't pull the audience on that. I don't even Please know how you don't. did it. Um, <laughs> it's an Instagram feature. Ooh. You probably already answered this one. But do you cry? Oh, I didn't answer that. Because there's an assumption that you're the kind of person who never cries. <gasps> Oh, Never. I wish. I Cry wish. now. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've seen you cry. Okay. I cry a lot. And also, like, I feel like it's one of the two superpowers I wish I had. I wish I couldn't cry. Oh, that's it. Okay. Go and on. I wish I couldn't get mosquito bites. Those are my two superpowers. I think that you were wasting your superpowers. Mm, nah, I'm pretty cool, like, as a mortal. You could so. do anything in the world, and you would choose I would not- choose to never get a mosquito bite again. Oh, man. <laughs> okay. Um, other options. Okay. So, it would include- no, I cry a lot. I cry a lot. You I do think, cry. I think because... Stars, they're just like us. <laughs> <laughs> Something like that. Um, I I think I cry ultimately because it it always feels to me like it's a stupid occasion. Um, mm. Not in the last six months or so, but it always feels to me like it's a stupid occasion. And I think that comes from having a lot of pent up feelings that never fully got worked out. And then when some silly thing happens. Well, I think you and I have this in common. We both also exhausted cry. Like yeah. when you've been going, going, going. Totally. And there's just something and then just that comes something out sideways. Yep. And then it's the best release, similar to how I earlier said, just cursing. But it's a great release. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I disagree. But on crying, you don't think it feels good after? No. Wow. I wish it never happened usually. Yeah. Okay. Well, we're going to work on that because I'm going to start the cry more movement. And okay, I'm going to start a, I'm starting a wine club. Are you going to start a cry club? Well, they're kind of linked because the more wine I have, the more likely That's I'm going to cry. That's true. So, oh my gosh, yeah. I did. This one? I cried at your wedding. Yeah, I was going to say, I have pictures. I was looking, working on the album the other night. There's pictures of you. Crying? Dotting your little eyes, yeah. Oh, that's embarrassing. That no. was like super late night. Oh, it's your wedding wedding. Yeah, I cried like at your wedding. During the ceremony. I was going to tell you the story were talking about of how I cried late night at your which wedding. Which actually segues real well into my next question. Okay, would well, you want me to tell the story then? I think either way. I can ask the question or it, you can play it Ask in. the question. Well, the assumption here is the reason you don't want to have kids, which is also an assumption, but phase two is because you love Lucy so much. I answered that question. Handle to have children. I answered that on the video. I definitely, that is not the reason. Um, that, that is absolutely <laughs> not the reason. I And I, what I said on the video is I love my dog very much. Vin and I are talking about kids all the time. We, we just were, it's going to happen when it happens. I want like this much time, like this much time. <laughs> 
last much time She'll of name no- every child Lucy. of not being a mom. I would like to not be a mom for five minutes. Yeah. So I don't know if that's going to happen because Lucy's going to live to be 36. But but Lucy does make you cry, which segues into what you did at my wedding. Okay, so what happened at the wedding was that Jesse, you guys heard Jesse on episode 30, the pre-chat with Gretchen Rubin, and she was also on the, the chat with Gretchen Rubin. Uh, Jesse did, gave a great... Uh, what was it? A technically a poem or a reading? She would do it was a reading. reading, a reading in the wedding. About how marriage is like owning I a dog. I don't know the technicalities. Yes, yes, marriage is like owning a dog, and it didn't even like. I remember it, and I I was like, this is really nice. I just remember thinking Thank this you. is really nice, and then I pr- continued to drink for the rest of the evening, and <laughs> I you do. I cried on Jesse's husband's shoulder. <laughs> it was about, like midnight you about the up. dog. I was like. You know, that speech just made me realize how much I love Lucy and how she drives me crazy, but I love her so much. Like, that's a great example of alcohol and just, like, oh, other yeah. pent-up feelings just uh, coming out. Because then I out. walked over, and I was like, who broke Amy? Like, I, you who, did? Yeah, I came I came over while you were crying. Oh, my it's bad. It's like the sonar. <laughs> like, when it's your wedding and your best friend's <laughs> crying at the bar, you <laughs> might be like, well, oh my god! This is a happy day, happy day, <laughs> happy day. So I checked, and then I was like, "Scotty, did you cry at your wedding?" I cried uh, during my dad's speech because he sang. That was a good speech. But then I cried. Remember, you girls, which I'm going to call you girls in this context, um, <laughs> which is okay. It was before we all walked down to go down the aisle because I was nervous, and I started crying. And to get us to stop crying, we started singing "Don't Stop Believing" because I needed yeah. to snap out of it. Yeah. So I cried with the build up. Yeah. But no. Then my dad's speech. just nervous about the walk? I think I was nervous um, to read the vows. Mm -hmm. Because I knew I wanted him to hear them, but I'm not a huge fan of public speaking. Right. I'm great at public speaking in front of strangers, which is why I'm great at officiating people's weddings when I don't really know them. (laughs) Yeah. But when it's like, I know all these people, they've been at many chapters in my life, and I'm about to like declare all this to Kev. That made me really nervous. Yeah. That's fair. But I really liked our best. Totally fair. So they were really good. Pretty biased. You guys are just uh, wordsmiths yeah. all over the There were the place. no curse words in our vows. No. No. And uh, that's the way it should be. It is. It is. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. So what assumptions, were there any assumptions that didn't come through that you thought people would say? Um, I don't know. I didn't think that far. Um, maybe that I'm a lush. Because I talk about Prosecco a lot. I was going to say about wine. About, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That could be a good one. I'm, I'm like thinking back to like other times I've introduced you to people and like what people would assume about you just by your job alone. I think, I think the introvert thing does tend to surprise people. Yeah, for sure. But like, do they surprise other people? Like people in real life? I think it surprises the internet a lot. I think it surprises people in real life. Really? Yeah. I'd say hmm. for my bachelorette weekend. Huh. Well, I was feeling like a pretty cool person at your uh, at your bachelor weekend. I mean, because I had so much fun with stuff me, in store. So. <laughs> right, you know um, that too. That was icing on the cake. Uh, yeah, I I would wonder, but then again, there's a lot of times I like when you and I mingle with people that you haven't met. I'm not telling people what you do for a living, mm-hmm. so I don't think. For them, they're just meeting Amy. It's not like, I'm like, this is Amy. Yeah. Watch these five clips of her. Yeah, we'll... I feel really weird when that happens. Like, I know you do. I feel really weird when that happens. Like, I just, but I'm also talking about this in a video. I don't know if it's out yet. But essentially, like, I I would never introduce myself as an influencer. But I know. Oh, oh sorry. I just had a very visceral reaction I know, to that. I know. But I, and, and I do too. But like I don't like the that. issue is yeah. Why is it so cold? I know I can see that you're cold <laughs> yeah. now. Um, I know that a lot of people would understand what a lot of my job is if I were to say that. But I just hate it because it's disagree. not a real job. Yeah, I disagree because you me. do so much more than that. Right. I had to do a lot in order for that to be a byproduct of what I do. Like It's not what you do a, and I think it would be selling yourself short if you said that's what you did. I would never say that. So I just don't like it. But I think that's also something I would challenge. Like you and I always talk about you hosting a dinner party that mm-hmm. you know, you bring people together that might not know each other. I think it's so great if you say disclaimer 
no one introduce yourself and say what you do for a living because that's such our default. I know. That's such I a go to of, hi, I'm Sarah. I work in retail yeah. or like what, I, like, but that doesn't actually tell anyone anything about me. Right. And it's just something like at the end of the night we do to almost like get gold stars. Right. And it's also, at, right. You like, know, it's what like, are you going to be able this. to bring to the table? And Some of the more interesting things about most of us right. are things that have nothing to do with our jobs. Mm-hmm. And how quickly do we all put somebody in a box the minute you know what their title is? Right. Like, uh, I could care less about what your title is. I've also always, throughout my entire career, I haven't cared what my title is. Yeah. Like, I know sometimes that's a big negotiation thing. Like, you give me director title, you give me manager. I mean, I care when it comes to the pay and equal pay and mm-hmm. getting the pay for what I deserve, but it's not... I'm not going to say I need to have this next to my name. Right. I don't think I've ever felt that way either. I do respect titles in the way that companies need to be structured just because I've I've seen that play out in my businesses. Right. But I, it's never been something I cared about when it was a thing that would have been something I cared about. The only time I cared was when I wanted to move into a job description that I wanted that wasn't the same. Not right. A, not a move up necessarily, but, but it fit the... If it's the box you were trying to get into. Totally. Like, it was like, I want that experience. I want that day to day. I mean, I'm going to be honest. The one other time I care is, like, if I'm going to have a surgery and they don't have a doctor in front of their name. Oh, my. That's fair. But but besides that. Nobody counts uh, that. I go into an office. He's like, no, I'm just Steve. (laughs) No, Steve. You're not cutting me open. No, Steve. Um, But I do. I think that's something we all do. And that goes back to assumptions. Yeah. The minute you're at a party and someone says, I work in marketing right. you're gonna make an assumption the same way they're gonna say i work in finance mm-hmm. yeah so i just think it's interesting it is interesting i would like to challenge people to stop making assumptions about each okay other. well listen i asked them for the assumptions it's a youtube tag it's all in fun <laughs> what is your assumption about people that watch your channel my assumption about people that watch my channel um one big one is that they don't have enough good people around them personally mm-hmm. Uh, I think there's a lot that you can absorb online, which is great. If people have found me, hopefully I'm one of those things. But I see that a lot where the conversation of like, I can't exit this person from my life because they are too close. That becomes an issue because it's real. Like Mm -hmm. you can't like you can't tell your mom to take a hike if she's negative. She's seen a lot of things like you got to give her that credit, but you can surround yourself with more positive people to help you stay on track. So I don't think that that's everyone by any means, but I do think when you can add some positive energy, you do start to realize where the dead weight is. I think that brings up the one other assumption I wanted to ask about Mm -hmm. because it was about there's an assumption that you are very good at keeping just close friends and you get rid of all the toxic people. That's really kind um I think I've I this goes back to like so much I'm gonna tell a story that I've never told before so I when I was in elementary school my mom talks about this all the time I'm like oh yeah you're right that really messed me up I I I forget about it because I blocked it out um when I was in elementary school my mom's a teacher in the school district where I went to school when I was in elementary school I was a part of ironically ironically I was a part of a crew of five girls in the fourth or fifth grade, fifth grade, fifth grade. And it was called the BFFs. Like we clicked out and got sweatshirts and it had like a five swag yeah it had like a somebody like remember painted sweatshirts oh like, yeah puffy yeah, paint yeah mm. i don't know what it's called but that's it if someone can make our one and send it in that'd be great yeah it was <laughs> it, no this would bring up terrible memories so but we can burn like, it <laughs> yes yeah good finish good finish a five it had like a five petal flower on it and it had each of our names oh. on each of the so anyway mm. so just to let you know like clicked out Something happened in the restructuring of the district. Technically, I was not supposed to be going to that school. And they ran out of space. And suddenly, Amy, the teacher's daughter, my mom was down the hall. I was a part of this group. I was in a 4-5 split. So I would have had this, I'm sorry, 5-6 split. I would have had the same teacher the next year. Suddenly in sixth grade, my last year in elementary school before Mm. middle school, they make me leave. And I had to go to the elementary school that was technically in my neighborhood for districting. I go to this other elementary school. 
it's hellacious. It's probably the worst experience ever. The teacher was as kind as she could be to me because she could see that I was so singled out. And finally, after Christmas or something, my old elementary school goes to my mom, hey, we have all kinds of openings if Amy wanted to come back. And it was like, they welcomed me back. And I could not wait to go back. I don't know if I knew what to expect. I don't know if I expected the you? worst or the best. I have no idea. But I feel I like do. you would have been excited. Like I after. was excited to go back to someplace I knew. I was yeah. there since first grade. I wanted to be, you know, I liked being close to my mom. Like, I wanted to be back there. I wanted my old teacher. I wanted all those things. I got back there and my friends had so far moved on without me. I don't know necessarily that they moved on together. It's, we were all still in the same classroom right. and you're talking about 30 kids. But it still felt like, oh my God, like I'm not even close to being able to get back in with these guys. No, and that's an age you don't want to, yeah. It was horrible. And yeah. then you go on to middle school, which is like... Could not hell, pay me enough. Even more, even more hell go than going into high school. Nope. It's like they put you through torture in middle school, so you're ready for the torture of high school. But then you're still not ready, right? And, <laughs> and I you're had still not ready. I had just lost all my friends. Yep. And then I lost whatever friends I made at the new school, but I still didn't care about them at all. By the time we get to this middle school, like I, it was a total crapshoot what happened from there. So I never really had friends I grew up with from that point. I made friends in high school. And honestly, I just wanted to get the hell out. I yeah. was so done with high school, I wanted to leave. But that and very going to, I'm going to breeze over this because we're not going into this, but that and having a biological father that's not in my life, the combination of those things really changes how you feel about people and whether or not they stick around. Yeah. And I just have never been the same. I think this is why I don't have high expectations of people. I think this is why quality time is probably my love language. I struggle with this a lot still. I need to take that quiz again. But because I don't feel worthy of time a lot of the time. But don't you think once somebody is in your inner circle or to what Gretchen was talking about in the episode around how your husband is held to a different level, mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. you, I think a sign of trust for you, just from my own observation, is when you do raise the expectations. Um, because like with Vin, like because you're you've let him in, yeah. Yeah, but I don't, I, again, like, I'm just, like, so, maybe I needed the permission from Gretchen, but I'm so happy to hear how she feels about the spice, spouse not being the same. Spouse is an inner expectation. So oh, do yeah. I, so if, if, if Vin is really me, because it's an inner expectation, it's different. Maybe that sucks, because I should treat him better sometimes, and, and all of us should treat our spouses better sometimes, and we get comfortable, but no. I, in my experience, having higher expectations of people in general, no matter how close they are to me, has That's only it. resulted in disappointment. Yeah. Well, only. I'm not, I'm not going to argue you on that one. It's, I, it's your at truth. At the end and it's of the day, that's how it's played out. Uh, and that's what I know for sure. Like, yeah. that's it. it. It doesn't matter if someone, you can feel completely different. And I'm like a million percent game for that because I know. At least, in, like, very, this is a very specific example. Let's say you do have high expectations of the people close to you. I'm your best friend. Game on for me because, like, I'm committed. Like, I'm, right. I'm going to make good. But a lot of people aren't that way. And so I, it's probably a, a defense mechanism to but prevent also, hurt. But I it is it, what it is. I think it's totally a defense mechanism. But I also think it's a dynamic that works for us because I don't have high expectations for people. I have very high expectations for myself. Sure. And totally different, you know, to what we were talking about with Gretchen. I have very high expectations for my husband, which again, because it's in her, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, if you've listened, I'm sorry. Um, Kevin uh, and Vincenzo aren't allowed to listen. To they're this actually episode. in a support group together. <laughs> Our wives have too high of expectations for us, but like I don't, and I didn't have that exact same experience, but mm -hmm. I definitely had experiences as a child being excluded by girls and being, um, bullied that I think have led to me not having expectations, but maybe that is why this dynamic works because I don't have, I am constantly present, pleasantly surprised by people because I just, yeah. I don't have expectations, I just, but I do hold myself to unrealistic expectations. Uh, totally. And, and as a friend, because I you do. can't have it all. Right. But then as a friend, I will guilt myself, even if somebody gave me nine passes to be like, we know you're overbooked. You do not have to come. If I am asked to be at something, if I am asked to show, show up, and I think my loyalty is on the line. I will bend over backwards for friends 
nine days out of out of seven. Yeah. <laughs> like there I will go. make a nine day week just to try to be at everything I can be because I hold myself to that expectation. I've do seen I that side expect of you. other people to do the same for me? No. Yeah. No. I'm yeah. genuinely surprised sometimes when people show up. Like I'm like no. Same. So I just think it's interesting. Yeah. I think it's we could go so much deeper on that. We don't have time, but it, let's it, make a two parter. I know, right? Uh, it's you can okay. Expect you another can, one. <laughs> you, can, you can assume oh, in God. ten episodes, Sarah will be I'll back. Be as long as we're still friends, I think. Oh we'll God, we'll definitely be friends in like a hundred episodes. Okay, that's good. I'm not planning on going anywhere. I'm like, a, we've already. So said we're getting to a hundred episodes, huh? Oh my gosh. Oh, I better be the hundredth episode. Does that work out mathematically? I don't know. We'll have to have the people vote. Okay. Well, I wow. Uh, I feel like I feel like all of a sudden I have an expectation of your audience to vote yes on issue Yikes. Sarah being the hundredth episode. Awkward. Like, the only thing that I think should surpass me is Oprah. Like, oh yeah, she can Oprah, have the hundredth episode. Oprah will beat you. I'm fine with that most of the time. Ooh. <laughs> uh, no, that's, that's valid. That's valid. But okay. shout out to Oprah for going to the Statue of Liberty like approximately three days after us. I mean, I'd asked her to come with us. Um, so awkward. I almost saw her there and wore the same outfit, but fine. I really, I thought about this the other day. I am a hundred percent Gail. You are. Yeah. Why? Because you're Oprah. Oh, okay. I'll take that deal. I I actually like I would fangirl out of Ga- uh, Gail hard. Yeah, like her career. I want to meet Gail for sure. Yeah, because it's like somebody interviewing you about me. It's well, like the same thing. I feel like seeing Gail. Like I just know we'd be akin. Yes, she and I. For sure. But like she has done a lot. Yeah. In her own right, She's and not just done a by lot. association with Oprah. Like no, they've definitely not at all. leaned on each other. But I. Gotta say, I no. They be, met through work, right? Yeah. So I'm just saying, Gail, if you're out there, Gail, number shout one out fan. To Gail. <laughs> Gail, All you Gails of the world, you. you know. Listen, Gail, you could be 99, mm-hmm. and then Oprah could be 100. Fair. And then you can be 101, because we'll have to talk a lot after that. I might be 101, 102, 103. Episode. <laughs> like that. Just the, the podcast switches <laughs> over to that time to we re-brand. met Gail and Oprah. Yeah, we're gonna be rebranding There's detail therapy time. at that point to BFF chat. Yeah, honestly. <laughs> What is an assumption you've made about someone that you wish you hadn't? Because do you think, like, because I, ass- first impressions count. Mm-hmm. And I think sometimes assumptions can subliminally affect how relationships are formed. Um, I think the main assumption, is, this is so meta. I honestly think it's like, I assume that uh, people see how hard I try and give me the benefit of the doubt and when I don't that's a great assumption though because that might make you be nicer to yourself yeah <laughs> you know what I mean? I, yeah because well because the thing is like I really am like when I show up I, I I show up but I think a lot of the time when I know somebody and I are not going to click is when they have too high expectations of me that mm-hmm. I never stated I would do and I assumed we were just cool. Like, yeah. because I've come so far in my relationships, and I don't know if this is up or down, it's probably down, that I don't trust a lot of people, I don't assume a lot, and I don't expect a lot, yeah. that I, I'm like, oh, everybody else must feel the same, right? Like, I'm just like somebody around. Right. You don't expect a lot of me, I don't expect a lot of you, but I find people expect a lot of me all the time, and it's not because I promised them anything. But that scenario, especially if you're not close with the person, like say it's just a peripheral friend or a friend of a friend Mm -hmm. or like a new acquaintance. I think the problem there is you're likely never going to have the conversation of like, where are we at? Like, or like, because you and I have had that conversation. Like, what were you expecting? Did I deliver? Did I not? Like both. I think until you have that level. Right. That could go on forever. Totally. And you'd never know. Like most situations you walk away not knowing what someone thought of you. Right. Uh, we all assume the worst. I am like the absolute worst. Like yours was a great benefit of the doubt. As much as mine's like, I assume they walked away thinking I was stupid and uh, contributed nothing to like, like I'm like, oh, oh I guess my I, self-worth. That sounds, <laughs> like, no, that sounds like a first impression though. Right. But like, I just think, 
I don't know when like the toxic um, assumption that someone had put on yours of saying like you cut out all toxic people. Yeah. I think that's an assumption because we've all interacted with toxic people. But I'm also going to say we've also all been the toxic person. Totally. So like I think that's the thing sometimes if we live in a world where we are the center of our own universes and we therefore have everything happening to us. We are always the victim. Yeah. We had that mean person do this mean thing. And I'm sorry. I mean, I know I have been the mean person. I know I have been the toxic person. I will also say it was never intentional. Mm -hmm. I did not go into the situation knowing what someone's, it goes back to expectations. Someone had an expectation of me that I did Mm -hmm. not live up to. I let them down. And then therefore to them, I was not a healthy relationship anymore. Right. Right. And so I think that's the other thing to look at when you're trying to cut toxic people out or you're like, does it need to be labeled that way or is it just not a good fit? Right. Like, and also if, if you're going through a season of life with somebody where you are the toxic person and you're freaking out because somebody is treating you like that, let it ride yeah. because it's okay. You're going to learn more from it. Probably not for a while, yep. but at the end of the day, you're going to be better. And I think that's the reason why I don't worry so much about that because so many toxic people who I wanted in my life left before I got to decide that. Well, and now I get to be grateful that they're not here. Yeah. Well, I'd say whenever anyone's going off on someone being horribly toxic or this, that, and the other, slow down and think for a second because I think sometimes the truly to their core toxic people – are also just very unhappy with themselves. Right. And it's, it's talk- how they, they can't, see They the can't world. kick themselves out of their own lives. Exactly. And so I think sometimes it comes out sideways. And I also think if you are ever in that situation where someone's accusing you of being toxic and mm-hmm. you fundamentally disagree, you don't see their point of view, maybe just instead of going back and forth and continuing the toxicity that's happening to both of you at that point, recognize that you're learning something. To your point, it's a season. Exactly. How You guys just aren't compatible. There's exactly. no one in this world you're going to always be compatible with. Dare I say you could even meet Oprah and find her toxic? Because everybody, I know, I just said it. How I did. dare you? I'm so sorry. But I'm just well, saying I it's all we'll have to end the show there. No, it's just <laughs> compatibility. And if we only ever look at it through our point of view, you're not going to live a full life. I agree. I so it goes back to word assessment. choice and it goes back to intention. Mm-hmm. No and F-bombs. giving people, like to your assumption, why not give everybody the benefit of the doubt? I, it's working for me. It's working I, for I, me because. I like I, it. Here's the thing. Benefit of the doubt, even if it's like maybe feels like a missed opportunity because something's slipping away because you didn't try your hardest and it's like you should. No, don't be the toxic person. Just let it ride. Because the reality is if somebody is into something as much as you are or you guys are going to click on something, it's going to happen. It's going to work out. And if it doesn't, oh, well, that's what the misconnection section of Craigslist is for. Get over it. I someone to write me a misconnection. I know, right? Have you been checking every day? No, after I got married, I thought I should stop. That's probably wise. No, I think I stopped in college. But I really was like, this would be such <laughs> a cool thing. Uh, but it, I mean, quite, They were fun to like, read, though. <sighs> So good. And before Craigslist got creepy, like I was like, this really could be like a you've got mail moment. And then and now it's like, oh, this is a serial killer moment. Yeah. But it all goes back to the golden rule. Got to treat people like you want to be treated. And that is where we'll actually end the show. I think that's great. And the silver rule. (laughs) (laughs) Jesus. Andrew, I'm sorry. Yeah, um, Andrew, if you could cut out every time I stuttered or... Got tongue tied at the beginning of this. That'd be great, uh, Andrew. If you could just make this perfect, please, oh, that thanks. would be great. Andy, can I call you, Andy? No. <laughs> I'm gonna send you a whole bottle of wine. All right, Sarah McCain. Where can they follow you on the internets? Um, I am on McCain Me Crazy, mm-hmm. and uh, really quickly connects you to Megan McCain's account. Sometimes accidentally, Oops. we have the same Instagram really? handle. Almost. I've almost tagged her in a lot of posts. I'm sorry, what? Because her Instagram handle is like at Megan McCain. And oh. for some reason, anytime I type in McCain me crazy, oh. it, it's dangerously close. She almost yeah. got tagged in some of my wedding photos. It's funny how Instagram just like starts Assumes. guessing. They're both blonde with the last name McCain. Yeah, totally. So I'm not Megan McCain, but she can be good to follow too. She puts up some good inspiration. Yeah, she's quotes. lovely. Um, or, you know, my dog, Pessimistic Prue. Yeah, she's definitely looking for dog followers, you she guys. She just so. broke 500. Whoa. I know. You guys got to get the media kit ready. I mean, Go get a brand I deal. I used to always say she's the dog version of Grumpy Cat, but. <gasps> you can't say that anymore. I, I thought she should do a post tribute to Grumpy Cat, though. Maybe. Well, yeah. She doesn't really. I feel like it's late well. now. It's too, yeah. <laughs> it's in dog ears. <laughs> you missed the boat on it's that. It's in dog ears. 
Thanks for being here, Sarah. Yeah, where can they follow you? <laughs> they know. <laughs> okay. Thank you for always ending the show instead of me. I just want you <laughs> to <laughs> get all the followers. Okay, just Thank end, you. end how Lisa Vanderpump would end. <laughs> oh, I'll see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>